Over 600 employees were shown the door at the CBC yesterday. Is our country on the brink of an existential crisis? Well, state broadcaster and hotshot Gian Gameshi, well, he thinks so. We get it. Other media outlets are facing similar conditions, too. Although, curiously, other media outlets have completely different responsibilities, assets, and fiscal identities. So we might want to avoid being satisfied by that old saw that everyone in the business is dealing with the same thing. You're right, Kamesh. Best we leave that old saw aside. Because truth is, well, our conditions really aren't similar at all. Sure, journos are out of work in growing numbers, but your bros in the biz, well, we don't get a billion bucks in government boosts every year. 64% of our funding isn't covered by the public sector. Our viewers don't dump $100 million in tax cash to our pockets in production every 30 days. How do you spend all that coin, by the way? Because speaking of different uh, fiscal responsibilities outside media outlets, well, they've gone to court to try and learn basic info about how the CBC spends taxpayer dollars. And while we're still without answers, how is it that after 50 years and a $31.4 billion giveaway, we still don't know how much the state broadcaster CEO Hubert LaCroix makes? or Peter Mansbridge, for that matter. They both, unlike the rest of us and our bosses, are paid on the public dime. Speaking of the public purse, your boss was found to be double-dipping, claiming 30 Gs in improper living expenses. So, why did it take the public broadcaster, allegedly interested in the public good, which may or may not include interest in where the public's money is actually going, it took your colleagues four whole months to make that information public? And even then, it was only after Sun filed an access to information request on the issue. Hold on a tick. Improper expense claims, eventually repaid, an apology. Sounds like something old Mike Duffy or Pamela Wallen could get behind. You know, those senators who were lambasted on your programs for weeks on end. At least they were suspended, unlike your CEO. Where's the outrage now, CBC? Yeah, best we leave that old saw after all. Public broadcasters have a unique mandate to connect the country as part of a public trust, to inform, enlighten, and entertain, to actively contribute to the flow and exchange of cultural expression in both official languages, to contribute to shared national consciousness and identity, to reflect this country's multicultural and multiracial nature. Ah, yes, the unique responsibilities of the public broadcaster, reflecting national consciousness, identity, bilingualism. Perhaps that explains the titillating CBC programming imported from France, hard, a program laden with softcore porn, or shall I say, le porn. Well, at least you are reflecting our multiracial landscape, right? Yeah, like that CBC casting call for a kids show host that was any race except Caucasian? Oh, but, but do explain, how is bidding on the Olympics or exclusively carrying professional sporting events a responsibility of yours alone? Shouldn't the role of a state subsidized broadcaster be to cover programming outside private sector purview? PBS in the U.S. does this and leaves the game shows like Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune to the private sector. But CBC has been airing the latter two shows to attract viewers for years, never mind the mega bucks from hockey games and Olympics. If private TV channels are bidding on something, the state broadcaster might do well to well, back off instead of raising the ante and giving itself an unfair advantage. The role of the state broadcaster can be many fold, but acting like a major player while making life more difficult for the guys off the government coin? Well, that's not one of them. We have limited resources. Our ad revenue has taken a hit. There's no such thing as new funding from Ottawa, only cutbacks. On the other hand, technological innovation has meant that we can do more with less. With the tools we have in the hands of creative, hardworking colleagues all over the country, the CBC has delivered on a level that couldn't have been imagined even 10 years ago. The dedicated workers at the CBC do deliver, deliver in spite of the challenges we face to our operations and it must be said to our morale. In fact, more than one of our leaders has observed the CBC has delivered so well that you, our shareholders, our audience, our fellow citizens may not have noticed the devastating nature of the cuts so far. Evil cutbacks from those mean men in Ottawa with no concept of Canada's diverse, non-Caucasian, porn-watching landscape. But how 
deep are the CBC cuts? Well, between 2012 and 2013, the CBC saw its public subsidy reduced by a mere 0.6 percent. And Gomeshi himself admits that the CBC can, in fact, do more with less. But have they been working with less over the years? In 2005, the CBC had roughly 5,500 employees. Fast forward to March of 2012, the CBC had over 8,700 active employees, according to the 2013 Auditor Gen General's report and confirmed by pension plan numbers. This equates to a roughly 60% increase in staffing levels in only seven years. Oh, boo-hoo. That same report shows CBC spends 60% of its $1.8 billion budget on staffing, translated to about $1.08 billion. That's not a mathematical error. The total staffing budget, when divided by the 8,700 staff, well, it comes out to roughly $115,000 per an employee. Yep, y'all are real roughing it over there, especially those unionized folks. See, the CBC has an automated performance management system in place for non-unionized staff, although there is no such mention of such a system for its unionized employees who, well, frankly, form the overwhelming bunk, uh, bulk of its staffing body. This public broadcaster is currently the third worst funded per capita in the developed world. And maybe you believe, like many of us do, that the CBC is a national inc. And while there is always nostalgia for an earlier time, the fact is that in radio, for example, our audience and share have never been higher. The interest has never been greater. Look, if you don't believe in public broadcasting, that's a perfectly legitimate point of view. But if you do believe in public broadcasting, then maybe the time has come to assert yourselves, Canada. And frankly, maybe it's time for those of us who work here to do so, too. The third worst funded in the developed world. Oh, the humanity. Why can't our state broadcaster be more like the BBC, the inspiration behind our CBC? As an aside here, one might do well to remember that the BBC, in turn, was actually the inspiration for George Orwell's great novel, 1984. Complete with Big Brother and the hopeless Winston Smith, who, in the CBC's case, is the Canadian taxpayer. Look, Jan, uh, save your breath. You're not fooling anyone. Canadians are more than ever in favor of selling the CBC. A recent Abacus poll found 45% of Canadians support or strongly support selling the CBC. That's a 12% jump in support since the last poll by the same organization, which notes sell the CBC support while well, it crosses party lines. And who can blame us? The CBC is a huge bureaucracy acting as law unto itself. Criticize the behemoth and it will batten the hatches, outlasting us all. I'm sorry some conceivably good people now find themselves looking for work. Really, I am. But that doesn't mean I'm buying what Jan's trying to sell. Spare me the Moby track and sob story, Gameshi. Face the music. The corporation that employs you embodies the worst traits of bureaucracy. Its main concern is more government money and less accountability. It's a poor way to run a business, and it's on the backs of us, the taxpayers. So I got myself on a streetcar, and it drove right into someone. You know, the driver said, I was looking straight ahead. Body was beating the Toronto sun. So? That there was a more rockin' than ever Gian Gameshi in his pre-CBC boy band days with Moxie Fervus. Andrew Lawton now joins us to talk CBC cuts. Thanks for being here, Andrew. It's great to be here, Faith. You pull off that episode loads better than Michael ever did. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. So tell me, Andrew, in your opinion, is Canada on the brink of an existential crisis, an absolute fog with CBC cuts? Well, I, I mean, who knows what horrors could be unleashed from Pandora's box now that Giango Meshi might have to switch to no-name quinoa and downgrade to Fiji water. But I, I think the interesting thing about this, when we look at uh, the public sector as a whole, not just CBC, is that any reduction in staffing in the public sector is in many cases in the best interest of Canadians. But we're not having $137 million, uh, or whatever it is in cuts 
simply because the CBC has decided to tighten its belt. This is still not going to result in any more fiscal responsibility on their part. It's not going to be a reduction in taxes or in the amount that they're actually getting. All it means that they've had such a bloated uh, a really expenditure model on their own end that they haven't been able to rein in that now they have to fire people because they haven't been able to make do with the taxpayers generous billion dollar subsidy every year. Yeah and we uh, we heard in the mono over there that you know a 60 percent increase even during financial crisis years it's absolutely absurd. Andrew are you surprised that we've seen precious little when it comes to change a request a call for transparency even under a conservative majority government. Well, it, it's really, really unfortunate. I think uh, one of the things we can look to is, is Margaret Thatcher advisor John O'Sullivan's uh, O'Sullivan's first law, which says that any institution uh, that is left wing will essentially become statist. And I think that you can put a great person at the head of a CBC, which uh, admittedly the prime minister has not done, and it won't matter because you're dealing with a problem where the execution is not the issue, it's the actual institution itself. And I'm sorry, but the CBC is a toxic institution. It doesn't matter what, how much lipstick you put on the pig, it's always going to be a pig at the end of the day. Why do you say that it's a toxic institution? I think because the very concept of a public broadcaster in 2014, when we have less barriers to entry media, because anyone can get a blog, anyone can go online, anyone can create a YouTube show, and no, I'm not putting those things on the same level as CBC, but this concept that we need a billion dollar broadcaster to present these things and give people an opportunity and give people a voice is absolutely absurd, because as you mentioned in your monologue, I mean, the CBC has been focusing its energy and finances for a long time on commercial interest on things like hockey, on things like the Olympics, which are things that the private sector is being denied the right to cover because of the CBC. And instead, they're giving us this arrogance of telling us what we need to see, what we as consumers and as Canadians need to want. I mean, it's amazing how misanthropic the CBC thinks Canada would be had it not had the illuminating brilliance of Little Mosque on the Prairie <laughs> in years past to showcase Canada's diversity. But that's what we're dealing with. And that's why the problem is the institution itself, not the people running it. Yeah, and I have to say, even when I'm out on the field, it's, you know, one Sun journalist to two to three uh, CBC uh, in, in a ratio journalists out there. Uh, do you think that there is a myth then, a self-propagating, self-interested sort of myth coming out of the CBC that Canada absolutely needs it in order to survive? What would Canada look like without it? Well, and, and this is exactly the problem, and I don't think that CBC should be abolished as a media body. I think that the more voices we have, the more people we have at the table, the better Canadians will be. What I think needs to be abolished is that line of funding, that drain of taxpayer money that goes from the federal government to the CBC. And I, and I think we have to go to basic supply and demand theory here, Faith, which is that if the CBC is in and of itself a business model that is viable, there's going to be public sector, or sorry, private sector interests that are going to go for it. And I think that CBC has in its day produced much content that uh, would be of interest to Canadians, but they should get to choose that, not have their money taken Andrew, against their will. we're going to have to leave it there. You've been great. Thanks so much. Thank you.